Yesterday, I stumbled across a trainer's manual that I wrote for the Natural Creator Training I held live late last year. Now, the focus was helping people plan for their next 12 months in a way that utilizes the principles of alchemy and magic. It's about doing things a certain way so that your action steps are quantum leaps forward rather than just the next things that need to be done. Now, one of the content chunks was around some ideas or principles from which to live life by to stay in a creative orientation. Now there are seven principles in total that I wanted to share with you. Now the recorded uh, the recording ended up taking a lot longer than I anticipated. So I'm breaking the episode into two parts. This week is part one where I'll share the first three principles and next week I'll publish part two which will have the remaining four principles. Now what's good about this is you'll have time between this week and next to put the first three principles into practice. I can't wait to hear how it goes for you. So let's jump into the episode and get part one underway. If there was a guarantee that you could create your dream life, a life that truly mattered to you, would you want it? My name is Terry ann Palmer Peacock, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the One Person Podcast. I have a belief that one person can make a difference in the world. That person is you. It's me. When we show up as the best version of ourselves, when we create and live our dream lives, we make a positive impact on ourselves and those around us. So if simple, actionable, step-by-step strategies, tools and tips on how to do that inspires you, then you are in the right place, my friend. So let's get started. There are seven principles to consider when going after your goals. Now, they are not normal goal achieving principles, but really powerful ideas to consider adopting if you want to live from a creative orientation, which is using your intuition and superconscious genius. Now, that last sentence sounded like a lot of words. Basically, if you want to take action without getting caught in past thinking and past patterns of behavior, which means creating the same results you've always got, then these ideas may help you do things a little differently. Now, in my last episode, I mentioned the idea of thinking, how 2% of people think, 3% of people think they think, and 95% of people would rather die than actually think. Well, this episode is for the 5% of people who choose to use their intellectual faculties and think. So let's get into it. Principle number one. Creating results are experiments. You see, when you get a result, it is neither good nor bad. It's just a result. It's feedback for where you currently are in relation to where you want to go or what you want to achieve. Now, if you follow the momentum methodology, you'll be asking yourself on a daily basis what the most effective next three steps are for you to achieve that day. What three things do you need to complete today that will move you closer to your goals? And you'll use your intuition to tell you what that is. You'll take the action step and you'll get an end result. Now, manifesting and creating what you want is straight science. Every action you take is just an experiment you do as you journey towards the completion of your goals. And like all experiments, you try something, you act, and you get a result. Then you evaluate that result. Did it work? Yes or no? Now there's no emotions involved because it's just feedback on your actions. And that feedback builds a new point for the structure of your new current reality. Now the feedback could be you need more skills to get the end result you wanted. It could be you need more practice. It could be you weren't clear enough on the creation that you desire. It could be you spent too much time thinking from the past. It could be you went unconscious and did to-do list action items. You know, those things that keep you busy but don't actually move the needle forward. It could be you sabotaged your desires thinking you didn't have enough money or time or friends or I think you get the gist. But it's all just feedback. So principle number one is no matter what your results are, they are just experiments. Neither right nor wrong. Principle number two is focus on third person orientation. So the power of this principle comes in relation to your focus. 
First person orientation focuses on identity and most often uses the language I, me, us and we. Now somebody who operates from this orientation is pretty easy to identify because they are consumed by everything that has to do with them. They often converse in conversations that answer the question, well who am I? So even when they try to turn the attention away from themselves, they invariably end up bringing it straight back to them. They're the person whom you sit down to have coffee with and 30 minutes later they say, oh we've talked enough about me, let's talk about you. And before you've finished your first sentence, they are asking you if what you are doing would work for them. Do you think that would suit me? Oh, how do you do that? I'd love to know so my day runs smoother. You know, we all have friends like that. And I'm sure we've all been that friend at some stage in our lives. I know I have. In fact, first person orientation is absolutely rampant in the personal development industry because the focus is blatantly on self, sense of self, working on self finding your own truth, becoming one with yourself, loving yourself, fulfilling yourself. Everyone is a mirror of myself. Oh, that behavior that they're doing, what's the reflection back on me? You know, I remember one of my marketing coaches back in 2012, Armand Morin. He was an absolute expert at what he did. And he said, I always remember he said this in one of the seminars, he loves coaches and personal development people because everything is always their fault. All right, so first person orientation has its place, but third person is where we could all put a bit more focus on to get better results in all areas of our life. You see, third person orientation uses languages, uh, language patterns like he, she, him, her, it, they, them. The focus is not on yourself, but outside of yourself. Now, I can already feel some people getting uncomfortable as I say that. Third person orientation allows for better relationships because it creates distance and separation. Again, more people may be getting uncomfortable as I say that, because this is the exact opposite to what most people teach. Why I'm suggesting this is a principle, well, let me say that again. Why I'm suggesting this is a principle is because separation and space gives perspective. It gives you the ability to see a greater perspective for how things are. Now, a simple example of space and perspective is I've taken a month off paddling at my club. I wasn't, after nationals, I wasn't happy with a lot of the things that were going on there, but the time away has allowed me to gain perspective in relation to my goals. A month ago, I was ready to throw the baby out with the bathwater, leave the club, have nothing more to do with them. But now that time has passed and I've had some separation and some space, I can see how the club can be really beneficial to help me achieve the goals that I want to achieve. So first person asks the main question, who am I? For them, knowing their identity is more important than knowing the truth. Third person orientation asks the question, what's truly going on here? Because for them, truth is more important than their own identity. A first person orientation normally has strong ideas, they have strong ideals and they have strong opinions. Now sometimes, often oftentimes, they are attached to their ideas. So they will feel threatened and personally attacked if their ideas or opinions are challenged. So let me give you an example of that. Let's say somebody who's in first person says, I think we need to sell our house and buy a couple of rental properties instead. And their partner says, well, I disagree. We need to do the numbers first and weigh up all the pros and cons. It's not wise to make any decisions without considering all the factors. Well, a person who lives from first person orientation would take this reply personally as a personal insult and see it as an attack on their financial intelligence or ability to make sound decisions or about them just for who they are. Whereas a person who lives by third person orientation would simply consider the idea for its merit. It doesn't confuse the conversation or suggestion with their identity. You see, operating from third person orientation allows you to change your mind without affecting who you are or how you think about yourself. So first person orientation adopts a specific position. Third person orientation thinks objectively and therefore seeks accuracy. Sometimes you are more first person, 
Sometimes you're more third person. Orientation is simply where you spend your most time. Now, if you've spent most of your time in first person orientation, you've probably most likely spent your time comparing yourself with everyone else. You might be overly sentimental and lack real compassion for others and most probably for yourself. These people often have difficulty making mistakes because of their tendency to take things so personally, which in turn inhibits their ability to learn. These people are less likely to view reality objectively, which makes it difficult to change or adjust action steps. People who operate from this orientation put enormous pressure on themselves to live up to a synthetic ideal of how they think they should be. Now, when you shift to third person orientation, you learn to slow down because you're no longer attempting to fit into a mold and are instead free to be yourself. See, from this orientation, you'll be able to experience the highs and lows of life while maintaining presence because nothing is linked to your identity. So you're open to the possibilities of other people who are different to you. You're open to other cultures that are different to yours and other ideas that are not your own. See, people who live from third person orientation are able to demonstrate an ability to express real compassion for others and themselves. Now, the way you move from first to third person orientation is simple yet powerful. You change your focus. Instead of directing your focus inward, you direct it outward. Now remember, this is contextual. When you shift your focus outward, you can relate to the world because you are separate from it. Nothing has to happen. Nothing has to be forced. You are free to be the way you actually are and the world is what it is. You let go of judgment and accept everything and everyone for what and who they are, including yourself. You may like certain aspects of yourself and not others. You do not need to change yourself or force love upon yourself because you know you are a perfect spiritual being having a human experience. You're perfect just as you are. Now you may desire changes in yourself and the world around you, but your desire is not motivated by an incomplete identity. It's based on what you truly want. Now, that principle, number two, is a pretty full-on principle. And we're almost out of time for today. So I'm going to do one more and then come back to the remaining four principles next week. So principle number three is keep life simple. So as a spiritual being creating a human experience, what makes a good life? Well, we get to choose how we feel about it. If we're going to live for 90 to 100 years, we want to feel good about our lives, don't we? And there are three questions you can ask yourself to keep your life simple. Question number one, what feelings do I want to feel? For example, I want to feel loved. I want to feel peacefulness, happiness, inspiration. I want to feel excitement. I want to feel proud. I want to feel joy through laughter. So the question you just ask yourself is, well, what do I want to feel? How do I want to feel today? And then the second question you ask is, well, when I know how I want to feel, what gives me those feelings? If I want to feel joy, peacefulness and connected, I know spending time on my canoe, getting out on the ocean, hanging out with my family, playing with Jermaine, having coffee with my friends, reading books, listening to podcasts. These are all the things that help me feel joy, peace and connection. So the last question or question number three is how do I structure my month? or my week, or my day, in a way that I get to do all of those things to give me all of those experiences and feelings. You know, the momentum planner I designed was designed for that purpose, to make life simple. And those are the questions that we answer on a daily basis. We don't need to make it much more difficult than that. What feelings do I want to feel? What experiences or what things give me those feelings? And how do I structure my time in a way that I get to do all of those things and experience all those things so I can feel that way? 
So those are the first three principles or ideas that if you choose to adopt will help you live a life you adore. There are four more that I'll share in part two of this episode next week. Now, perhaps you might want to spend the next few days putting one or two or maybe all three of these ideas into practice. Try them on for size and see how they work for you. Now, remember, take the emotions and meanings out of the results you get and instead look at everything you do as a series of experiments. Change your focus from first person orientation to third person orientation and see how better your relationships become. Do you have more perspective for how things truly are? And keep your life simple. Ask yourself three questions. How do I want to feel? What gives me those feelings? And how can I structure my day so I can experience more of the things that allow me to feel how I want? Thanks for listening today. It's been really fun and I have really enjoyed bringing this content to you. If you enjoyed this episode, then please leave me a review and share it with your friends. The more people we reach, the more lives we can positively impact together. And if you're interested in knowing more about my signature program, The Momentum Method, which is an easy way to reach your goals using your superconscious genius and includes a digital download of The Momentum Planner, then check out the show notes or leave me a message. So until next week, stay inspired, be creative and love everything you do. Hold up. 